Hello one and all, this is Captain Luckless and welcome back to Sunless Skies. Lots of rumors and uh, stories out there about Captain Luckless. There's one here that I heard from Whiskey Con Mayo that I'd like to share with you called The Tall Tales of Captain Luckless or part of The Tall Tales. Whiskey Con Mayo says, uh, after he ran away uh, from the orphanage, this is a tale for another time, but before he was taken in by the knotted sock, Luckless lived with a raving prophetess for a year and a half, working as her seeing eye boy. She was a memorable woman. As tall as she was wide, she was very tall. And as loud as she was angry, she was very angry. She was as bitter as an empty bottle, and Luckless never knew if she truly cared for him. But in her more lucid moments, she taught him the secret rites of Storm, the angry god in the roof of the Neath. These were rites of blood and spark and ancient wrath, which would never be forgotten. That's why, while the other urchins whispered their half-remembered prayers, Luckless shouted them with gleeful abandon from the rooftops, imagining that grumpy old storm was thundering in response up in the roof. And who knows, maybe he was. I love these, these rumors that we're hearing about Captain Luckless. Are they true? Who knows? Um, also, I've gotten some, uh, some tips from the crew. As you know, I'm not too experienced of a captain, so they're helping me out a little bit, reminding me about things that uh, I maybe should do, such as turning on and off the lights when we're in. Uh, we want to be a little bit more sneaky. We might want to turn those lights off. Um, also, um, they told me um, some stuff about uh, Mr. Menagerie that we might have forgotten about. Uh, he mentioned something about... That was, that's the, uh, the guy that, was, uh, that could sell us bats, right? He said something about the obelisk being reclaimed or something like that. So when we go back to the circus, we'll have to talk to him again. Um, also, the uh, crew reminded me that a Batman is kind of like a personal servant, but for an officer. So it's just like a, an old term for like a butler, kind of, but for, for officers. Um, also, um, the humiliated magician uh, referred to someone named Plenty, I guess. I, I, I can't really remember exactly what he said. Um, in Sun the Skies, that refers to the Palmyre and Plenty Circus, but in Fallen London, it referred to Mrs. Plenty's Distracting Carnival, which is a place in Fallen London, um, which is kind of like the circus. Uh, also, perhaps, uh, like the Inconceivable Circus, there's something off, a little bit off about it. So I guess that's kind of... Um, that's like Sunless Skies version of that, of that place, which is kind of cool. Okay, um, I am going to, I'm going to take a look at the Northeast just to explore. And uh, I know that there's a port there. Traders Wood, I think it was. North Northeast of New Winchester. I don't actually have anything to deliver to them, but I'd like to get that sixth port report because you've got five. And that can complete uh, the Fatalistic Signalman's um, quest. I was also thinking about this, and I think I would like to talk to the Incognito Princess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend that uh, that Tale of Terror and do it, because I'd like to get, I'd like to get as many quests as I can, so that I can make more informed decisions, so that I'm, I kind of like moving more efficiently around uh, the world, because it's a large, large area to travel. So we're going to prove oneself a fit confident. It says, well, she seems incapable of discerning between the two. The incognito princess seems intrigued by any mention of daring do and abyssal horror. Well, we've got plenty of that. The truth revealed. Thrilled by your tales, the princess invites you to her quarters. I have a secret, she says. Removing her tiara before donning a second, more expensive tiara. <laughs> I am Queen Victoria's daughter, she says. I trust your discretion. It's a considerable ask. This must be the captivating princess, the daughter of Victoria, who dwells in a miasma of rumors of excess, ranging from red honey to cannibalism. Half a six... Uh, cannibalism isn't really an excess for me. That's kind of just like an everyday thing. A half-asphyxiated starling has somehow found its way aboard. It flies to her hand. Oh, okay. She pets it gently. One is traveling to broaden one's mind before one takes on a new role. It would be a delight to meet with the engineers who keep the eternal ball of perjurance tick-tocking away. She smiles. 
you find yourself outside. Okay, we learned about her. Seek something new at Perjurance. We've heard Perjurance before, right? Lost the tail. Okay, hold on. She has certain ambition. The incognito princess has revealed her identity to you. Would you like to visit Perjurance? Shoot, I don't remember where that was. Where did we hear that before? In the back of my mind, there's always the... Um, the box. The black box. Sell it to know. Hmm. Well, maybe we're heading towards Bergerance. I, I, I know we've heard it before, but I can't remember. Is also, is there anything I wanted to buy here? Some souls. I have 379. Uh, we've got six fuel and four supplies. I think we're good. I think we want to head out. So we're going to... Um, what I decided to do is I'm going to head up here. Traders would... What does it say again? Um, on this? It says literature for traders would. The Somerset students camped in the dark wood require fresh material for their continued studies. Entertainment and occasionally and occasionally roughage. Requested five consignments of ministry approved literature. Traders Wood lies to the north northeast of New Winchester. Was there a port there that I missed? Let's go take a look. So lights. Okay, we turned the lights off. We don't we don't need the lights here. We're really close to our next level as well. Wilkinstead. Traders would. This is where we encountered all those, uh, all those enemies, right? I'm a little bit confused. Maybe I should check that way. We've already been, we've already been this way before. Is there um, some place I can dock that I'm missing? Our terror is gradually going up here. Oh. Butchery. Well, I don't have that, unfortunately. I guess that's this right here. Yeah. So what is the story with this spot area over here? We're really just looking for another port. I guess um, we'll scout around a little bit here, and if I don't find anything right away, I'm going to turn around and go uh, northeast. Oh, what's that? Mining, okay. Send out a scout. Aha! Found something. June 27th, 1905. You bribe your bat with moss until it tells you what it discovered. <laughs> I love that bat. Oh, God. It's really dark up here. Okay, now if... 
That's a marauder. Hasn't seen us yet. Maybe we can go around. Oh, it spotted us. Okay. Let's turn the lights back on. Okay, a little bit up. It's gotta be cool. Don't want to overheat. Okay, let's juke a bit. It's it's projectile is pretty slow. Okay. Got it. Nice. Just gotta be patient and don't don't panic, which I have a tendency to do. Uh, we can get sovereigns. What are our chances now? 83% chance. We have um, three spots in our cargo holds. Let's seek unusual items. The cabin door did not survive the onset of your guns, nor did the captain. You have to tread carefully. The carpet will not be saved. This seems to be um, kind of like a repeated thing. Maybe it's a bit different at the end. A few scorched documents sit on the bronzewood desk. They make for interesting reading. Apparently, London had need of a few brave captains willing to bring fire to the tactics. Uh, you would not have expected his, the signatories of the orders. OK, it's I guess this right. This part is like based on what you get. To salon stewed gossip, and that's something that they wanted at uh, Port Avon, right? To gain more favor with them. OK, let's check out this question mark and then um, Maybe we can continue on and it might turn around this way. It's like there was something to mine down there. Oh, that was the thing we saw before. That's right. All right, that was good. That was good. Oh, the lights. Oh, but if we have the lights off, the ter our terror goes up faster, right? That was the uh, that's the trade off, I believe. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them on generally. Uh. Oh, okay, good, good, good. It's just some uh, salvage. Oh, perfect. We can take that back to Port Avon. Got another fight on our hands. So, yeah, good. Oh, I just missed. They like to just kind of drive into us, eh? Uh-oh. Oh, that was close. We're overheated a bit. Did I take... I didn't take any damage. Okay. So we're close. We didn't actually overheat. Okay. Um, let's go back and get some more um, rare things. Salon suit gossip. Okay, same thing. Another destroyed ship. The Powell's Grove. The detritus of yet another skirmish in the Winchester War. A wreck. 56% uh, chance of success. Could lose some crew. I don't know if it's... Let's give a shot. Failure. Oh, wait. Now it says 10 of 10. A raving recruit. Uh oh. <laughs> Your signaler fetches their signal lamp and flashes a patient message into each port side window. You watch and wait. There. Hands banging at the glass from within. A wild eyed face. Dispatch a boarding party. They retrieve a survivor who's eager to sign on. She proves to be a hard worker. However, her reckless laughter and her stories of the horrid, haunting things she saw from her frosty window do not improve morale. Ten terror. It's getting higher. But we got one crew member, so that's not bad. Could have been worse. What? Okay, enough, enough combat for now. Gosh, driver, I came here once. Don't remember why. King, his cup, came here once, so we found some place. Ah, here it is. 
Somerset Camp. A new port. The crew are relieved to see land, perhaps unwisely. Okay, so hopefully we can get a port report here. We can complete that quest. The forest edge. So this is... Okay, I see. The whole thing is Trader's Wood, and then the port is Forest Edge. Trader's Wood is a sprawling, secluded forest on the edge of the Reach. Few venture beneath its gloomy boughs, and legends speak of a king who sleeps under the barrow at the wood's heart. Okay. The wood's edge... Uh, the wood is a vast... Wood is vast as a fell giant, and fathomless as a great ocean. We got a campfire. Um, three figures draped in scholars' robes huddle around a campfire. Expeditions into the woods deep. Somerset College has, until recently, funded expeditions into the forest. The parting glade. The forest rises behind the station, where a few tents have been set up. That's the, so those are the things we could do. Let's check out the shop. Um, we don't have the literature, fortunately. What's this? What does this say? Trader's Wood keeps its secrets. Bargains available. A good price for verdant seeds. You've got two spots. A syndicate of allotment owners are selling seeds. The vegetation of the reach grows boisterously, even violently, and the sacks are strapped tight with leather belts. I don't know if we're going to grab that. Maybe on the way back after we do some more exploring. Although I am going to head back because I want to. Uh, I think I want to sell those port reports. Assuming we get our sixth one here. Looks like they have bronze wood for sale as well. One at 175. Might be worth grabbing one because um, we could sell it at Port Avon as part of our. Does it, does it tell us how much we get? It was like 200 and something, wasn't it? Three more. It doesn't say for this one. I might consider getting some bronze if we can get some more money. Um, but this is tempting also. Although we don't know where we're, where we're going to take the sacks to. Okay, forest edge. Let's go to the woods edge. The wood is... Uh, is vast as fell giant fathomless as great ocean like the ocean much of it's hidden from view careful expeditions are required to go deeper into the wood the forest is rich and wild in the verdant species of the reach exploring the starlight dappled edges of the wood could be profitable you may only perform one of these actions at a fortnight the wood guards its secrets as we read before so we can gather flowers. The flora that grow in the shadow of the regent's grave are unique to this corner of the high wilderness. You begin verdant seeds. What are our chances? 41. Not very good. Hunt in the trader's wood. The game in the forest is unparalleled. The glories of the sport it offers are spoken of even in the hunting lodges of Port Avon. You may gain a, cat, a caged catch. 25% chance. Slumber in the wood. Starlight uh, silvers the branches above you. Birds call quietly. Rest. Visions of heaven. 34% chance. Not very good. Maybe not right now. <laughs> A campfire. Three figures are there. Scholars. Draped in scholars' robes. Huddled around a campfire. They are arguing about kings. A banner in the colors of Somerset. London University's most respectable college gleams in the firelight. As you approach, the discussion dies. One of the scholars, a woman with a fierce expression, stands up. Only scholars should be here. Are you one? Well, you know. Oh, we're not an academic. Unlocked when origin academic is. Ah, so the origin matters. Isn't that cool? No, but you have friends. Academy 3. Perhaps a gift will persuade them to let you enter the camp. They look wretched camped out, out here. We can give them a supply. I don't think that's a bad idea. We've got a fair amount of supplies and we could buy another one. When you don't have it. Let's, let's try. 
students of the grave. The vituperative classicist compares your offering with the burnt toast and wan tea they had been suppering on. Well, all right, I suppose. The woman is vituperative classicist. Vituperative. Uh, not familiar with that word. You guys can hit me up. <laughs> let me know. Crew, let me know. Her companions, a dismal paleographer, a forlorn young man, and a feckless theologian, a handsome youth with an easy smile. Theologian. Uh, yeah, theologian, I think, right? They explain that they are here to enter the regent's grave, where they believe a sleeping king lies buried. They do not agree as to the king's identity. Unfortunately, the college has cut our funding, the classicist explains. Speak to us if you'd be interested in helping. I'm very intrigued. Ask how you can help. Do not have the entering the regent's grave. The scholars uh, intimid uh, intimidated intimated sorry the scholars intimated that you might be able to help them continue their explorations into the wood speak to the feckless theologian the divinity student has a dozen bad habits and a firm conviction that saint john the apostle slumbers in the region's grave okay closest to the fire vituperative classicist the student of the ancient world is armed with more scorn the vengeful goddess, and a firm conviction that the Sumerian queen of the heavens sleeps in the region's grave. So they all have a different idea of who's sleeping there based on their specialty, I guess. Nearest to the wood. Nearest to the fire. Speak to the dismal paleographer. The forlorn student of medieval manuscripts believes that the emperor, emperor Charlemagne lies in the region's grave. His tent is furthest from the others. Um, I wonder if I can speak to all of them. Which one am I most interested in, in case I can only speak to one? Ancient world. I guess I'm more interested in the ancient world. Let's speak to the vituperative classicist. The classicist tent is practical and largely unornamented. The interior is damp from her various walking clothes, which have been scattered across the floor. Old playbills and gaudy costume jewelry hang from the tent ceiling like charms. The classicist is pacing the tent, reading Herodotus while smoking up a storm. Theory. Okay. You can ask the classicist about her theory. Why does she believe the ancient Sumerian deity Inanna is buried in a forgotten tomb in the high wilderness? Ask about the feckless theologian. Why does she think of her academic what does she think of her academic colleague? And we can ask about the dismal paleographer. I'm curious about the theory. The Queen of Heaven. Isn't it obvious? She rolls her eyes. Fine. I'll tell you what I told the academic senate. The high wilderness is heaven. Not as the church conceives it, but as the Sumerians did. A place of stars and chaos and impossible powers in proximity to and affecting our own world. But far, far removed? She pauses for breath. Inanna, the queen of heaven, entered the underworld in search of her husband and was trapped for a time. That is the myth. This may be the truth. She waves her hand dismissively. Besides, we made some promising discoveries in the wood. Continue. Okay. What about, what do you think about the feckless theologian? A strong opinion. Her invective goes for an hour. Invective. Not familiar with that one. Her invective goes for an hour and she only remembers to fetch you tea midway through, I guess, her opinion or whatever. A liar and a traitor and a fool, she says, spooning in entirely too much sugar. I loathe him. Her hand shakes as she pours. She, yeah, super strong opinion. Okay. What about the dismal paleographer? A dim view. She laughs scornfully but refuses to be drawn. I will not waste breath on the undeserving. So respects the uh, feckless theologian more. And it's, this is just the same thing. I'll assume discoveries. Okay, I guess we can talk to all of them. The classicists. That's who we talked to first. 
Let's talk to the theologian. The theologian's tent is the largest of the three. Its interior has been decorated with carpets and throws, which trap the smoke from his hookah. The air is a scented fug. The, theolo the theologian is reclining on cushions, drinking wine. Um, okay, I want to know the theory first. Why does he think St. John is buried in a forgotten tomb in the high wilderness? The golden legend. The theologian's eyes widen. He is delighted to have been asked that question. According to the Legenda Aurea, St. John is sleeping somewhere, waiting for the coming of the Antichrist, which would mean the end of the world. And what is the high wilderness but that? Feels like the high wilderness is the end of the world, okay. We left the world behind, and the stars are going out. And just after we arrive, we discover a tomb hidden in an ancient wood. He runs a hand through his hair. Sometimes we must have faith. Hmm. Waiting for the coming of the Antichrist. Okay. Um, what do you think of the uh, Dismal Paleographer? Old tragedies. The theologian smiles innocently. Yes. We used to know each other very well indeed. This was back at college, before all his passion got sucked out of him. Sighs. Some people can't accept change. What about the classicist? Ambition. She's very talented and very funny. And not at all nice. I got that impression. And she's furious with me. Why? He won't say. I think I've done enough damage with both of them. He shakes his head. If it weren't for St. John and the Academic Senate sending me here, I doubt I'd have seen her again. Until she became principal, of course. Oh, she's meant to become principal. Or she wants to. Or he thinks she's going to become that because of her ambition. Okay, what about the final one? The Dismal Paleographer. Emperor Charlemagne. The Paleographer's tent is some distance from the rest of the camp, and almost in the forest. It is smaller and more worn than the tents of the others. Inside, however, the tent is both warm and sturdy. No rain leaks through the oilskin. The paleographer's inks and reference books and old theater handbills are neatly sorted. The paleographer is at a little wooden desk, conjugating the subjunctive. What about uh, your theory? Why does he think the Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne is buried in a forgotten tomb in the high wilderness? The king's duty goes on. It's a little strange, I admit. You certainly won't find this in Eindhardt. But there are legends that say the great king did not leave his people on death, and instead sleeps in a barrow, waiting for their hour of need. He almost smiles. Your query is people. I do not forget, uh, I do not forget that we are British. He pauses for effect. But is our queen not of German parentage? Would not her ancestors look out for her? Europe's greatest monarch, as she embarks on her most significant endeavor? Okay, what do you think about the feckless theologian? Lost friends. The paleographer is lost in thought. When he answers you, he looks rueful. The three of us were at college together in the same year. We were all interested in the theater, but eventually pursued other things. I hadn't seen him in years until the Traders Wood funding came up at the Senate. He sniffs. His intellectual is second rate. Or his intellect is second rate. But his charm is first class. We can't all be brilliant, he sighs despondently. And what about the classicist? A titan on the stage. A remarkable scholar. And a terrifying... Gonril? That's not one I'm familiar with. At college, when she trod the boards... He shakes his head. Ancient history now, which is her province, not mine. He makes a strong cup of tea for himself and then offers you the same. Bitterness has curdled her. He sips his drink and grimaces. Like this milk. I kind of like the paleographer the most. Turn to cap. Okay, how can we help here? The scholars intimated that you might be able to help them continue their explorations into the wood. Your inquiry induces a rare spirit of cooperation in the scholars. The last expedition into the woods found a document written in the correspondence. 
It contained directions to a place called the Steward's Font, the theologian explains. Alas, that is all it needs to break their alliance. The paleographer begins to argue that the steward was a chief position in the Char Charlemagne's household. The classicist makes a point uh, reference to Anand's, Anand's husband. The theologian's smile is forced. If you could find the font, it would be an Im immense boon to my work. There are sputters of protestation. Our work. You can begin expeditions for the expeditions in the deep of the wood. Entering the regent's grave. Begin an expedition to the steward's, steward's font. So I guess we have a choice to start. The camp's deserted. Wait, wait, wait. Have we started? The shadow of the barrow falls over the camp. A mournful wail carries on the wind. Cluster of scholars. Okay. Camp. Howls in the trees, conspiring against colleagues. Or did I have to go back? Oh, there we go. Expeditions into the woods deep. So we talked to everyone at the Somerset camp. Let's before we do that, let's go to the parting glade. There we go. Port report. There's no one here, but perhaps someone will take an interest in how the wood fares. Outside of the Somerset camp, the great forest of bronzewood trees has gone untouched by human hands. Voices sound in the deeps of the woods, forlorn and far away. The wood is vast and vastly lonely. Okay, we've got six now. So what I'd like to do is talk to the signaler. The fatalistic signalman. His mustache is stained with nicotine. His isambard lined uniform is neatly pressed. He always expects the worst, confident in the knowledge that he will, uh, that he will still be disappointed. Ask if he has seen enough of the reach. As you stopped at each port on your journey, the signalman spoke with other signalers. He has filled a set of dog-eared notebooks and is now collating their contents into a book. Accumulate at least six port reports for destinations in the reach. Learning about the fatalistic signalman. Okay. Have you seen enough of the reach? Oh god, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Whoa, oh, that was a level up. Okay, that's why. It's just there's like no music, eh? So the sound came out of nowhere. Every corner of the sky. That was experience, nice. He stiffens as you approach. As if you've caught him doing something he shouldn't. People outside the trade don't understand how signaling works. Every port, every corner of the sky has its own signs and messages. It's a right mess. I've been cataloging them, the semaphores, the lamp languages, the badges, and the passphrases. Not that anyone will ever read it. He puts the pages into his hold all, suddenly embarrassed. Anyway, uh, I've been meaning to ask. Traveling has stirred up old memories. I'd like to visit a friend in London. We'll find her at the Steam and Sapphire Yards. She won't remember me, but I should try. Um, wants to visit London? Okay. So we've got to keep that in mind. We've got two reasons to go to London now. Actually, wasn't it three? Didn't, um... What was it? Oh, perjurance. Sorry, perjurance. So two, at least two reasons to go to London. There was the box and, um... And him now. But London's in a totally different area, right? Um, but now, what was it he asked for again? Came to work on the Isambard line. Not right now. We are going to, uh, pick, um, our next facet. Take a moment to reflect. Got all kinds of choices. So what are the new ones? Haunted was the last one, right? I think we got all these ones. Okay, we got the black sheep. You never fit it. You never fit it in. You were a piece from another puzzle. You came to revel, revel in your family's disappointment. Their disapproval was a trophy. Their condemnation, a commendation. Why did they resent you? Hmm. I don't know if that fits our story. Family footsteps. The apple did not fall far from the tree. The way you turned out came as a little surprise to those around you. 
cast from a mold, they said. But which of your family's qualities do you embody? Meh. The bell tolls. You have foreseen your own death. It did not please you. Perhaps you saw it in a dream. Perhaps a medium read it on your palm or in your tea leaves. When death comes, where will he find you? Didn't we, haven't we had two kind of prophecies about us? This is, this interests me. Perhaps uh, the bell tolls an option. The blockade of New Winchester. You fought in the greatest battle of the Winchester War when the regional uh, governor appointed by Your Majesty was driven from the Reach. The independent Tacates besieged the port. The loyalist stovepipes hoped to hold out until reinforcements led by the Imperial Dreadnought Her Majesty's displeasure. Her Majesty's displeasure. That is an awesome name. Uh, could arrive. Which side did you fight on? So this is a decision we could make. I don't think I'm ready for that one yet. A settler. For a time you lived the hand-to-mouth existence of a homesteader. Carving a home on the frontier of the Reach. Nah, that's not us. A narrow escape. Your engine was nearly destroyed, but you lived to fight another day. You unlocked this when you survived your locomotive being reduced to less than 10 hull. You walked uh, through the Valley of the Shadow of Death. How, was it, how has it changed you? I like this a lot. That's, so this is because we, we um, got knocked down to three hull, if you remember. A Thief Oaf. They say there's no honor among thieves. They were wrong. This is one we had before, right? The Lightless Seller, you and your closest collaborator spoke a solemn promise. Maybe. What's this one? A Metamorphosis. You could no longer be the person you were uh, told to be. Your old life would have ground you beneath it. You had to change. But what was the change? Slow or sudden? I like, um, I like this narrow escape. That's pretty cool that something we've done in the game can be remember, right? And kind of like engraved into us. Learn to be cautious. I feel like we've learned to be cautious. <laughs> Death waits in the sky, kept at bay only by a few inches of plating and the fires in your engine. Hearts and uh, veils again. We get a tale of terror, which, which is something we need. And visions of the heavens. I'm going to go with um, learn to be cautious because it's true. We did. After that, I'm, I'm a lot more cautious. So I'm going to pick that. Cool. Deed, a narrow escape. You have learned to be cautious. The sky gives no second chances. Engine was nearly destroyed, but you live to fight another day. That's the trick. Just got to make it to the next day. Um, Parting Glade. The forest rises behind the station, where a few tents have been set up. What might be an owl calls from somewhere in the woods, or in the wood. In the far distance, a great stone barrow rises over the trees. The glade, an oasis of wildflowers and sweet meadow field, in the midst of the brooding trees, is where captains meet to do business and bring their ventures to the wood. To conclusion, birds trill in nearby trees, and the sweet scent of flowers pervades the air. Let's explore the glade. The far, uh, far, far away. There's no one else here at present, but there are signs of recent passage. A discarded set of cups from some clandestine picnic, loose paper hastily torn from a notebook, and a few bullets in scorched grass. People came to the glade to conduct meetings as neutral ground, and as a place to think, secluded from the watchful gaze of the high wilderness. Okay, well, I guess there's nothing to do here. There's no one to meet with. We might come back here to meet with uh, I don't know, someone at some point. Let's take a look at these expeditions then. Somerset College has, until recently, funded expeditions into the forest. Those who return speak of voices on the wind, of murmurs in uninhabited groves. Let's first decide how many crew you wish to take with you on your expedition. The more you take, the likelier your success, but at a risk of losing them all. Then choose your destination. Prepare for a large expedition. You'll bring every able body willing. Lower the chance of failure, but risk more crew. 10 crew. You need 10. 
five fuel, two supplies. Is it going to use, um, oh, I see. It's going to use two fuel and two supplies, I guess. Uh, hold on a second. Let's get a couple more supplies. I don't want to be left with zero. I know I could have, buy, could have bought it afterwards, but... Small expedition. Risk a few crew, but increase the chance of failure. Okay. Two and two. Need five. Turn to the wood. Ah, uh, shoot. What's like, what are our stats at? I feel like I'm trying to think about like where this is in the world. This is pretty far out. And it seems like the further we go, the more challenging it is. So I don't know. Like, I feel like it's expecting us to be of a certain level when we get here. We have good hearts and veils. I'm assuming it's going to challenge us. We have to do some checks. I like to be bold, you know? Fortune favors the bold. Let's bring every able body willing. Advice for cat. Oh, good God. Oh, it takes everyone. <laughs> You're a little shorthanded. Advice for captains. This is a bad idea. You're a little shorthanded. You have fewer crew than your locomotive's minimum safe manning. Things will begin to go wrong. You can uh, take on more crew at major ports like New Winchester. Okay. Thanks. Into the woods. We should get them all back because we're going to be successful. A sizable contingent of your crew volunteers to follow you into the woods. Volunteers. I don't know, guys. Did you volunteer to join me? Hacks are hoisted onto shoulders. Rations divided and sensibly stored in little tubes. We're with you, Captain. A stout signaler tells you. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Into the wood. Good God. If you leave while you have crew embarked on an expedition, they will not be available until you complete that expedition. I see. So we're kind of stuck here. Somerset scholars believe that the font will provide clues to the identity of the king in the regent's grave. Stewart's font. Expedition for otherworldly artifacts. I see. So we don't just have to follow the... Uh, the scholars. Whomever kept the wood has left ruins scattered about the forest. Oh, it's moderate difficulty. Need to reach Trader's Progress 5. To successfully complete an expedition, this is an expedition of moderate difficulty. For Bronzewood, there are rumored to be groves of ancient Bronzewood near the heart of the forest. What is this Trader's Progress 5? Oh, Trader's Wood. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. If you've begun preparations, you'll need to embark on an expedition to regain any crew. I think we should just go on this one. Because it doesn't say anything about Trader's progress, and I'm assuming we have no progress. So let's just do the, uh, the Steward's Flawed Expedition. The Pale Wood. Here we go. The scholars share individually what they know. Their transcriptions of the correspondence differ significantly, and they refuse to work together on a single translation. Still, it should be enough to get to the general area of the font. You gather your crew and make for the edge of the Whispering Wood. The scholars emerge from their tents to wave you off. You're on the fringe of the wood. Continue. Thunder shakes the trees. Storms nearing, a signaler says, drying up her hood. Should we be out in this, Captain? We can press onward and brave the storm. This kind of goes with the uh, the story that Whiskey Conveo was, was talking about. The storm god, right? Um, your iron gives you 80, an 83% chance of success. Take shelter. Send scouts to find a safe refuge. 100% chance. Safer but slower option. I like the 100% chance. <laughs> We're going to take shelter. No kidding success. Beneath the brutes. While you wait, you shelter beneath a vast tree. It is the pale gold of a candlelit manuscript page. Page. 
Uh, the cover is inadequate. The flask of brandy does not last long enough. So that's neat. Um, then torchlight nearby. Your scouts return. There's a hollow under an ancient tree where you can make camp. There's even a cache there. Someone has come through here before you. Far and farther into the woods you must go. We actually gained one supply. It is not the date that it was. I don't know what that means. Let's continue. You emerge into a field of purple flowers, bright as new bruises. Captain, the stoker's voice is anxious. Can you hear them? Something whispers from beneath the petals. Listen to the voices. What do they know? Maybe you can learn. A 56% chance of success. Oh, I see. So we're one progress through the wood. Stop or your ears. Plug your ears somehow. Sh uh, shut out the sound. Rally your crew to, s to stop them listening. 67% chance. I see. It's like, uh, probably like sirens or something. Um, okay. Well, let's go with the thing that we have the better chance of succeeding at. Oh, yes. A haze of purple. You find your booziest stoker and demand she open her knapsack. Inside, as expected, a veritable cellar of wine. Her protests are stifled when she realizes you intend to drink the wine now. Better everyone's drunk than hearing the voices. This is good. I like this. I like this technique. An hour or so later, you stagger through the field, holding each other up upright. The flowers whisper to you. Do not hear them. Terrors reduced. We're far and farther into the woods. It begins to pour. The gray sky is angry. Your crew look desperate to make camp and progress will be slow over sodden ground. Perhaps this is an opportunity to recover some of your strength. 67% chance. Oh, I see. So I guess you gradually, um, you gradually move in. And then when you do the expedition next time, you make a little more progress. Traveled far enough. You will lose all progress, but it says you'll lose all progress. So maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe there's like a checkpoint at four. Let's, um, let's recover our strength. Let's give it a shot. 67%. We might lose someone here. Oh, a night to forget. A navigator discovers a hollow way running through a vast copse of blackwood. You can set a watch at both ends and light a fire without being seen from elsewhere in the woods. Uh, your crew stay up late, swapping stories of old rulers and their various ends. Your sleep is dreamless as death. We got one. We got one fuel. Okay. Briefly without terror. And we go further. Perfect. Uh, long shadows move through the silver trees ahead. There's a mournful howl. Someone sounds hungry. A stoker tries to joke. A low growling uh, comes from behind you. The beasts have your scent. Draw the beasts out. Hmm. 41% chance. Hide from the beast. We'll probably have a better chance here. 75. Or we can leave. Let's hide. Let's hide. Partial success. Okay. You break from your path and slip into a copse of trees, white as bone. You creep under the canopy. Perhaps the dense wood and utter darkness might throw off pursuit. You hear the occasional crunch. Surely only a branch underfoot. As your pursuers enter the wood after you, there's a scream from somewhere behind you. One of your crew has been caught. You'll lose. You will lose crew. Oh, I see. Oh, it's only one, though. If we go back, we will lose hearts like the stat. <sighs> So we lose one crew. We're going to move on. It's already too late for them. They're dead. You remain hidden. There's another scream drawn out and agonized. A sharp crunching sound. Then a great deal of satisfied tearing. When all is silent, you move on. Crew embarked on an expedition. These crew are ready to explore. Okay, so we just we just lost one. Doesn't say doesn't say nine left, but let's continue. 
The tree line parts ahead. Enter the steward's font. Below the thundering white water, a cave is visible just under the lip of the rock. Ready to explore. Okay, five. We made, we made it five. Uh, we made it through five uh, different uh, challenges. Let's enter the steward's font. A scythe of starlight. You scale down the wet rock face and into the cave. It is several moments before your eyes adjust to the light. The cavern is not natural. The walls are covered with bronzewood and studded with uh, Navaratine gemstones, driven in too deep to remove. Distant starlight from the cave mouth reflects off the stones, filling the cave with radiance. Towards the back of the cave, you find a silver seal the size of a crown and a curved crescent blade. Correspondence is scored on the blade's battered metal. It is too large to move, but you record the sigils. Perhaps one of the scholars will be able to translate. You take the seal. I have a feeling they're not going to agree on the translation of this one. Entering the regent's grave, you have found a blade in the steward's font. Return to the scholars. You're on the fringe of the wood, and we have nine crew. We got them back. Perfect. Um, let's let's just start from the top. Let's speak to the feckless theologian. The theologian's tent is large to the three. This is the same thing. Drink and wine. All right. Okay, ask for the theologian's help in translating the sigils on the scythe. He smiles lazily, but his eyes belie his insouciance. Uh, he wants to know what you found. You'll only be able to consult one scholar. Do not share their findings with the rivals and guard their research jealously. Um, which one did I like the most? I think I liked... The paleographer the most. I'm going to speak to the dismal paleographer. Get their help. Very keen to know what, if anything, you found in the wood. Yes. The giggling place. The dismal paleographer uh, grabs your notes eagerly. He is swift to initial uh, to an initial translation. This is a gift for service. Carolingian kings gave gifts, spoils, riches, offices for loyalty. He pauses. Oh, what's, what's this? The paleographer labors over your notes for several hours. At last, he rises from his desk. I think this is given as an office, tamer of the king's bower. But that's no position that I know of. He gave authority over the giggling place, located somewhere deep. D do you have a map? It, it would be easier. He scrawls markings onto your map. Take an expedition to the giggling place. Okay. Uh, lots of laughing gas there, I guess. Gain 250. Okay, we got a bunch of money and 250 experience. And I guess we could come back and do another... Um, do another expedition to the giggling place if we wanted to. What's going on here? Oh. 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 I think the game crashed. Nope. Oh. <laughs> it almost crashed. <laughs> that was close. Um. I think. I, I guess there's nothing else we want to do here. We could do another expedition. Um. I have three slots. We still have supplies. I could buy some bronze wood. Probably not worth it, though. Could buy the seeds. And fill up our... You know what? I'm going to think about this. Um, and we'll decide what to do on the next one. The game's acting a bit weird, and I don't want it to crash on me. So I'm going to wrap it up here. That was super cool. It kind of, those expeditions reminded me a little bit of uh, Cultist Simulator, where you go on expeditions as well. Um, I like that each port that you go to has like a different 
type of adventure to go on and has different mechanics. It's really cool. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Captain Luckless signing off for now. I'll see you on the next one. And I love you all.